the RPG, commonly referred to as El Rocket Launcher in Spanish, is the iconic Resident Evil endgame weapon that has turned so many bioweapons over the years into explosive lasagna. But what if the biggest, baddest, and most expensive weapon our local arms dealer had to offer was the only weapon available? Well, we're going to ask the question today, can you beat Resident Evil 4 Remake using only rocket launchers? When the president's daughter was mysteriously kidnapped by unknown assailants, there was only one man in the world who had the rocket launcher experience and the trust of the White House to be sent on such a highly sensitive rescue mission. And that man was Chris Redfield. But when it turned out that Chris was out in Africa playing golf on the BSAA's end of year party, the president had to fall back to the second best option. And who better than the man responsible for continuing the Redfield bloodline? What's as the boys dropped us off at Pueblo for the 10th time this year, as per the president's orders, we were handed off first and last weapon of the run, the rocket launcher. We start ourselves off with a single RPG to replace our starting pistol. I mean, who would send someone to rescue their daughter without a rocket propelled grenade? Bad parents, that's who. And to be fair, we do immediately put it to good use by blowing up what appeared to be a boiling pot of diarrhea being cooked on the stove. En route to the village, it felt like this challenge was probably going to follow a similar route to our no-kill run. It's an interesting one because it alters the entire flow of the game. Instead of the bosses being the hardest parts of the game, these were now the easiest with the most basic areas of the game now becoming extremely stressful. Let me in. Let me in. Anyways, after we run around the village, and rescue Luis, the Grand Fromage, rocks us to sleep gently in his arms, which gave us a quick opportunity to lay out the rules. Now, this may come as a shock, but the number one rule here is that only the rocket launcher can be used on this run. But, I mean this in the most literal sense, I can't use anything else. There was no knife allowed, there was no pistol allowed, or any other weapons of any kind. So, that meant if we wanted to grab this beautiful priceless antique pearl necklace to sell to the merchant, it would need to be sold in a million individual pieces. The environment could be used, which meant we could melee when prompted and use traps to our advantage. But I did veto the shooting range, as technically you can't win any charms with a rocket launcher. Which, on a side note, would have been a pretty dope game. This veto effectively ruled out our ability to redeem our 20% RPG discount charm, meaning we'd have to buy our rocket launchers at full price. Right, with that covered off, we can complete the most important part of any of our challenge runs. Uh, no, not gathering the eagle crank so we can torture Dr. Salvador in his own traps. I mean this. On my way to retrieve the church key, I realized that being a solo bachelor meant that I could do whatever I wanted. With no responsibilities or anything to tie me down, I could forge my own destiny. We could set people on fire, we could disintegrate the locals by pushing them into their own traps, we could get the pig guy to issue beatdowns on our behalf, or star our own rendition of the 70s classic Jaws. Plain and simple, we would live, laugh, loving. But these things never last. After we send our first rocket launcher at the speed of light up El Gigante's back door, we eventually collect Ashley from the church, and despite her being our mission objective, I resented her very existence at all times. The reason being is that she escalated this challenge's difficulty from a lemon and herb to an extra spicy. Spicy. With Ashley now with us, the villagers had a chance to grab Ashley and attempt to drag her into the back of their white panel van against her will. We try our best to maneuver around them, but Ashley's AI had the pathing abilities of room temperature milk. Which was problematic, as if they succeeded in their kidnapping, it was game over. With no knife or any other weapons at our disposal, it seemed like the only option we had to release Ashley was to nuke her and her boomer kidnappers, praying to God that we didn't have to take the president's daughter back to him in a doggy bag and, more importantly, waste 50,000 pesetas in the process. But was this truly our only option? Well, like the scientists we were, we did a little bit of testing around this. So, where the Ganado takes Ashley, they follow a predefined abduction path. Let's take this Castle Ganado from the maze as an example. He follows this route back and forth until you're far enough away or out of sight, which is when they'll disappear down the door to Joseph Fritzl's basement and give us the game over. But if we keep them in our line of sight and awkwardly follow them around like a third wheel, they can never actually disappear with Ashley. Um, excuse me, what's the actual fuck? They had like the kidnapping version of performance anxiety, but in a good way, it gives us plenty of time to figure a way out of this mess. Well, don't you worry gamers, because I don't just bring problems, I also bring solutions. First up, we tried doing a just stop oil and blocking their path ahead, but they just push us out of the way. Next up, I thought that I might be able to use an enemy's attack to knock the kidnapper out cold, but standard attacks don't have any collision with other Ganados. 
However, there are certain enemies in the game who possess attacks that can actually damage and knock other enemies over, which if we baited these attacks at the perfect moment, it could allow Ashley to escape the clutches of her kidnappers. Enemies like Plagas, Dogs, Ganados with Molotovs and Dynamites and Brutes all do attacks that can kill or cause grievous bodily harm to Ganados that cause them to drop Ashley, which we would have to use to our advantage throughout the game. And the first time this was called into action was back in town. On the way back through, somebody grabbed Ashley illegally by the butt, which we were helpless to stand up against. Lucky for us, we had our loyal pooch, the devil dog from the pits of hell in the area. And if I position myself perfectly and trigger this attack, we could use it to knock Ashley out of this guy's greasy hand. Sensational. Afterwards, we sneak through the windmill area and contract fever of the cabin variety, meaning we had to let Luis do the legwork, but we could move in for melees when he teed us up before we let the brute rack up a 25 friendly fire kill streak. Chapter 6 went on to provide some more nicely packaged Ebola for us to consume by forcing Ashley to be kidnapped in front of our eyes. Again. Our enemy types here were limited and the brute here has no hammer, so instead, the only way for us to get her out of this guy's death grip was to burn him alive. We needed to get our man here to well done and he was currently at rare, which took forever. We had to lead and trigger the Molotov throws perfectly to try and get them to land on top of Ashley. Once we'd finally got Ashley back, it was time to retrieve the checkpoint crank from the five times back-to-back -back winner of Pueblo's best-looking village twins, the Bella Sisters. Now, sadly, the hot one in the green takes the crank and refuses to give it back, but I also refuse to release my rocket. It was mine, my own, and there may have been many like it, but this one was still mine. Instead, I used the entirety of my five head and remembered what Jesus had said all those years ago. Give a man a chainsaw and he'll chainsaw for a day. But teach a man to get others to chainsaw themselves to death and they'll make it through the checkpoint without ever using a rocket launcher. What the f*** are you talking about? So how we got to this conclusion was that the chainsaw attack from the sisters actually has friendly fire, which was excellent news. I can't believe you've done this. First off, I used both the sisters to clear out everyone in the area for me until it was just the three of us left. Oh, no! We then used the other sister to murder the one with the crank, and despite it being pretty hairy at times, after about 20 minutes, we'd committed successful chainsaw fratricide. Despite being my wonderful little helper here, for good measure, I got this Molotov guy I'd left behind as insurance to burn the final sister at the stake as well. Next up on the menu was our second boss fight and the opening failure of the challenge. Have you got a problem? You Unknown to me, there is apparently an old Pueblo law called the Rocket Launcher Regulation Act of 1809. Under section 3-5-B, the bill states that no person or establishment within the town of Pueblo shall transfer, sell, or otherwise provide more than one rocket launcher to any individual within a single transaction. For us, this meant that when we buy the rocket launcher from the merchant, he is forced to pull any future sales to us until we fire our current stock. And with Mendez being the smelly, cheese-eating religious goon that he was, his fight is split into two phases. With only one rocket launcher, I couldn't leave Mendez's boss arena to go back to the merchant to grab another one. I had hoped that creating a time incursion and blowing him up at the first gate might have got me around this, but it went nowhere. Using Chen Stack's item adder mod, we can actually give ourselves a second rocket launcher in the arena after using our first one. My plan was to now take out a small loan of a million pesetas and pay back my rocket launcher debt at the next available merchant. So once we'd finished Mendez up with the double and made it to the castle, we bought another rocket launcher from the merchant and fire it off into the distance to repay my debt. Before buying another one to take with us into the castle area. I think this made the most sense. Despite the rocket launcher legal loop on having to sell my body for rocket launchers as these things weren't cheap, we'd be able to continue with the challenge at least and see how many rocket launchers we'd need to complete the game. And to note, this is also why I chose to do this on assisted difficulty as the RPGs are the cheapest here at 50,000 pesetas compared to hardcore and professional where it's 180k per launcher. Anyways, we burned through the opening castle section and slipped through the crack in the wall to avoid being murdered and sacrificed in the main hall. Now, many of you may believe that we'd need to spend another precious rocket launcher here to take care of the Garador in the dungeon, but guess what? 
We can actually save ourselves 50k here and not have to commit disability hate crime against our blind friend here. On assisted difficulty, the Garadon moves about as fast as that Somali sprinter who took part in the women's 100m race last week. So if you lure him back into the opening tunnel and sprint back, you'll have just enough time to crank your way out to the exit and make it up top with your rocket launcher still intact. However, for every win, there is a loss. First, we lose our rocket launcher to release the sword puzzle gate, and up next was the loss of my sanity in everyone's favourite mental breakdown room, the water hall. So the first problem here is that the odds of Ashley being abducted in this room is like one for one. It's impossible to avoid. But another stickler here is that we have no enemies with attacks that could help knock her off the shoulders of the local priests. So if she gets captured, it was basically a guaranteed reset. Step up my next solution, coined the save tech. Speedrunners often use this to get out of sticky situations, but if Ashley gets abducted, if you can use same bot it to the nearest typewriter or auto save point, you can simply save and or load your recent checkpoint and when arriving back in, Ashley will magically be free of her abductor, allowing her to follow up with you safely. Which if you paired it with the door load tech, where enemies just disengage if you get to an area they aren't programmed to enter, it was an absolute game changer for situations like this. So after making it through the halo wheel area, Ashley gets kidnapped on our way up to the planks, but a quick showcase of this tech gets her back in a heartbeat and we are ready to receive our next migraine. We've got the first section here down during our no kill challenge. You can basically let Ashley get kidnapped after raising the platform, allowing this dude to kindly walk her all the way over to the next crank uncontested, meaning we didn't have to kill any of these other zealots. But there is a problematic moment. How would I get Ashley off this guy's back and prevent these two psychotic priests from running at speed of light and punching her off the next crank? Well, after several attempts, I had the answer. If you position yourself around this area here, you can shoot your first rocket launcher at this guy, taking out all three enemies, releasing Ashley, and giving her a clear path so she can get cranking straight away. We then have to borrow our second launcher, which, if perfectly applied here, can kill both of the runners in one, leaving Ashley to raise the platform without being disturbed. The rest of these guys here couldn't believe it. We'd stunned everyone with our exquisite technique, including this guy, who was so shook at what he'd just seen that he came running through the door to ask us for an autograph. After we lose Ashley, Hunnigan perfectly times a call from the president and patches him through for an update on his daughter's rescue. She's six feet tall. She's got the best body. Yeah, she's hot. We pay back our Waterhall rocket launcher debt and use another one to take out the Pope in the next room. We resist the urge to let Salazar listen to the satisfying sound of one's impalement. Oh, Fire one rocket launcher to unlock the gates across the moat. At the ramparts, we use this guy's rock et launcher. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see myself out. He helps make sure our new friends regret ever following us up here, but we do leave the west side of the castle's treasure unlooted. You can't actually get back through here without destroying this casket to release the gate, and El Gigante's rocks can't actually break the clasp, and as there wasn't 50k's worth of loot here to recompensate us, I declared this area of the castle not worth. <coughs> we use the cannon to destroy the gate and leave El Gigante untouched as a thank you for helping us out. Special mention to these mad lads for finding this out, you absolute chads. At first, the dogs in the maze seemed like very good boys, but when one decided it would like to inhale Ashley's throat, we were forced to use the same tactics from the village with the savage mutt to get them off of her. We make it through the maze but have a lot of stress with a group of shoeless hobos lurking in the maze looking to snatch Ashley up. After the scripted grab, she's too far away to make it to the typewriter in the Grand Hall, so we spend 20 minutes trying to convince the guy to just drop Ashley and walk away. But when that doesn't work, we trick one of the dogs into biting me in the face, knocking Ashley off to help get us out of there. <laughs> Inside the hall, we grab both the serpent and goat's head, but you couldn't destroy the plaga armor from up top before grabbing the lion's head, which meant we wouldn't have access to the merchant in the hall. So instead, we had to drop down and take on an additional RPG debt again. The knights can't actually damage each other either, so we have to use one rocket launcher to take out the first two. But if we immediately use our loaned launcher number two to kill the next two behind me, we can actually save Ashley's blue torches and use them to stun and melee the remaining three to death, therefore saving us a rocket launcher in the process. We pay back our single launcher debt immediately after Ashley gets recaptured and spend one launcher lowering the bridge to gain access to the frame room. But before that, we had to run all the way back, buy another launcher and take on the two Garadors guarding the way. The beauty of having RPGs was that fighting these bosses and enemies didn't require much brain power. A shot right here takes them both out straight away, or if you're a psychopath like me, you can use them to divide everyone else in the room by two and then blow them up. For science, I had tested trying the same technique as with the Bella sisters, but these boys were real thick and juicy and can only be damaged by hitting the plaga on their back. We hear some disturbing screams coming from the next door. Fuck this. Which we reluctantly go check out before the terrifying 
unstoppable. Verdugo, and he's dead. We make it through the mines with relative ease and can actually take out both El Gigantes in the lava room with just the one RPG. We had a very close and personal conversation with Luis in the lift before he gets a taste of the true British experience from Krauser. Buenos tardes, Ramundo. Krauser makes a bold statement here, assuming that knives are quicker than rocket launchers, but he was wrong, uh, and I was going to prove it right now. We tried forcing a rocket launcher into our hands with the item Adam mod here, but no luck. Unfortunately, Krauser will only accept repeated stabs to the crotch area. After Krauser departs, we give Luis the funeral he deserves and backtrack through the entire map to mop up all our outstanding treasure and items. I purposely left all of this for a moment where Ashley wasn't with us to avoid any unnecessary mental distress. We then have the misfortune of going up Salazar's lift, where we fell into our next unarranged rocket launcher, Overdraft. Unfortunately for us, this was Salazar's greatest weapon. The lift had been programmed to Leon's exact weight measurements. A single pound over 165, and the lift would stop and refuse to move until we removed the additional weight. One absolute mastermind. After plenty of trial and error, the best way through here was to let everyone on the first stop, which brought about three enemies, and we use our first pre-purchased RPG to clear them off. We then borrow funds for another RPG for the next stop where five more enemies jump on and borrow a further two more launchers, one for the next stop where four more enemies join us and one for these two other randoms, which felt like I was burning 50k for nothing. We had made it, but at what cost? Well, the cost was 150,000 pesetas and after paying back our IOU, we were now officially applying for benefits from the Pueblo government. Salazar doesn't even have long enough to spit out a single insult at us before dropping us his lip balm, before we big brain Krauser and sink his boat and Ashley to complete the game early. I wish. We pick up another rocket launcher when we arrive at the island and find some fellow RPG enjoyers guarding Ashley's prison. I'm tired, boss. I'm tired of being on the road, lonely as a sparrow. Next, we make a discovery that absolutely shakes me to my very core. It turns out in this scene, Ashley is actually fully awake here and just ignoring our calls out to her. Just look at those eyes, you psychopath. After this revelation, we grab the keycard and head into the Regenerador Museum. And now with no way to attach the thermal scope to my RPG, we could trial and error each of the containers to find the Regenerador holding the wrench, but it's just not the way we work here on this channel. I brought my friends in with me who kindly assisted in punching the first Regenerador out of his test tube for me, and that Regenerador then helped to get everyone else out to join the party. And with one rocking launcher we unlock the secret Regenerador dance recital before getting some great synchronized booty explosions. <laughs> We grab Ashley and have to contend with another enforced abduction in the smelting area. Now, this particular moment again leaves us with no get out of jail free options. There are no enemies here who can help to knock Ashley off of their back, so we have to expend another rocket launcher here to help free her and progress. But in my excitement to blow something up here, I did forget to unlock the door for Ashley, so her AI blew a brain gasket trying to figure out what to do here. Powering the sewers back on spawns another group of Ashley hijackers, but if we hold the tightest lines possible on the way back out, we can make it back over the bridge, get nibbled a bit by some alien, blast through the door, and make it to the merchant to save before reloading the checkpoint and voila. Ashley is magically returned to us. Liam Neeson, take notes. You should have just done this. Thank you. Now, the next part is very important. Assessing my money situation, I decided that the Pesetas to rocket launcher exchange rate was pretty decent, so I could afford to be a bit more spendy. I brought a rocket launcher to help expedite the bulldozer section, meaning that Ashley can one-shot the wall on her first try. We do have a slight problem in that this man decided he wanted to try and break in and illegally enter Ashley's own private domicile. This is my own private domicile and I will not be harassed, bitch! Without any other options here, what we could do is taunt the dynamite guy into throwing a stick of home invasion justice right at this guy's feet, which would knock him off the cabin and allow Ashley to progress with the wall's demolition. We head through to Krauser's tent and find a picture of the policeman from the start of the game. This seemed really random, and Krauser refuses to elaborate on this any further when we ask him about it in the next section. So, the next question is, how are we going to be able to get through Krauser's gauntlet with only one rocket launcher? Well, that was the beauty of it. We weren't. We can get through the opening section by keeping a tight line here and tanking the SMG shots, allowing us to crank the gate up first try. Right! That's it! 
I have had enough! What was that? When Krauser grabs us in the next segment, if we position ourselves perfectly, we can kick him off us into his own explosives. We then tank the bear traps, the mines, and the turrets before making a pretty sweet dodge when Krauser pretends to do his best Legolas impression. Ah. He is the one. Unfortunately, this is where we hit the blocker. His pre-transformation phase also requires a rocket launcher as well. I tried absolutely everything here. First up, I tried seeing if I could get him to friendly fire himself with his grenades and his bow. Next up, I tried seeing if I could get the mines to trigger his next stage, but we don't do nearly enough damage, so after being turned into Swiss cheese by Krauser, we had to take out another payday loan and write a check to the merchant for our next RPG usage. Telpatone for yet another failure, I committed to landing an epic mid-air shot on him, which, you know, didn't disappoint. We rendezvous with the merchant to pay our rocket launcher debt. And up ahead, the local Pueblo helicopter tour swings by to get a close look at World War III breaking out below. We use a rocket launcher to blow up the AA gun, and despite taking a spanking in the next area, we squeeze through and flip both gate switches before watching a tragic air incident unfold in front of our eyes. Let me tell you something, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We push through to the final Citadel stronghold and use everyone we could as a human shield to protect us from the brute's crossbow bolts. But would you believe it, just as I was getting ready to leave the area and effectively finish the challenge, this RPG guy up top shoots this absolute Hail Mary and blows me into the automated turret killing me instantly. Red mist descended over me and I came back through this section with this guy's name carved into my rocket ready to disintegrate him, but when I've reached him, it seemed Karma had already found him. I'll tell you what you get! the police! Get what you fucking deserve! After finishing the area for a second time, we find a sign from God that showed us we were on the right path. The Helmet of Justice. So we try it on. You are so beautiful. <laughs> and with that draws a close to this challenge. We reached the final merchant and sell everything we owned to him, netting ourselves close to 776k. We release Ada from her shackles, one-shot Saddler, and use the iconic red rocket launcher from Ada to sign off this run in true RPG-only style. And severe head injuries and fracture skulls aside, can you be Resident Evil 4 Remake rocket launcher only? Well, no. But also yes, maybe. No, in the traditional sense that the merchant misses a huge market opportunity by only selling one rocket launcher at a time, preventing you from getting past bosses like Mendez and areas like the lift and the waterhall. But I'd be tempted to say yes in the sense that if we ensured all rocket launchers were purchased from the merchant and that any rocket launcher debt was paid. To conclude on this run, we used 27 rocket launchers and bought 26 of them, costing us a total of 1.25 million pesetas. Now, if we add that to the total we had left behind, we could have made around 2, 2.25 million on a full run, so I'd guess we'd likely make it through standard, but hardcore and professional, just, uh, yeah, impossible. You'd need to sell a kidney or some eyeballs if you wanted to make it through. Well, there you have it, gamers. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Also, I got 100% accuracy in this run. Is this some sort of sick joke?